Okay, so <laughs> let's do a quick show on the the die of the DM13. Okay, what did they change between the 12 and 13? Not a lot, okay? <laughs> Pretty much not much of anything uh, was really changed uh, between the die, the, the DM12 and the DM13. Why? They're working on the assault matrix, okay? So, uh, die was pretty busy working on the assault matrix, and honestly, the DM, you know, the matrix has been such a great seller for die. They really are, I don't think you're gonna see any sort of crazy radical changes to this gun uh, for, for the next several years. I mean, it, it's just been, it's the flagship marker of die. It's been a consistent seller for like the past, yeah, I don't even know, eight plus years. And I, I honestly, you just, you know, I mean, I apologize to the Matrix owners, you know, to the, to the DM owners and the DM fans, but you know, you're really not gonna see a lot of massive radical changes to this, okay? You know, die came out with the NT, that didn't work out very well. The NT, I'll tell you guys a story about the NT. The NT was not was not meant to be marketed towards DM owners, okay? The NT was supposed to be marketed more towards poppet owners, okay? The the basically the biggest difference between the NT and the DM was the DM was supposed to be a uh, slower moving bolt designed for basically like PSP style play, and the NT was supposed to be a faster moving bolt, more designed for semi-auto type play, okay? The NT was more designed, uh, the feel of it and how it shot and stuff like that was supposed to be for people that are shooting poppets that wanted to try shooting spool valve guns. But you, what ended up happening was a lot of people that shot DMs tried to shoot the NTs and they didn't like them. Okay, well, it doesn't shoot like the DM. No kidding, it's not a DM. So, you know, Die learned their lesson really, really quickly about, you know, messing with, uh, you know, or trying to come out with, you know, new products that are gonna cannibalize on their own sales and stuff like that. The DM has been a consistent seller for Die for many, many decades. It's brought great success to that company, and they're just not going to meddle much with it. Okay? The fuse bolt, you know, everything about it, you know, you're going to see very, very subtle changes year to year to year. I know a lot of people are waiting on an OLED board. Um, not sure if that's coming down the pipe or not. Um, I didn't give me any indication that it was going to be coming out this year, but. Um, you know that that's basically that's a little little history lesson off of some of the gossip that I was able to gather, especially on the NT and stuff like that. Um, let's talk about oh, you know, what, and something else I want to talk about too is efficiency. Okay, I get beat up all the time about how we do our efficiency tests. We're gonna do one on this gun here in a second. I'm gonna explain to you there we we do our efficiency tests one particular way. Okay, basically our efficiency tests are. Imagine you're in a PSP game, 12 and a half balls per second, you break out to the corner and you shoot pods until you run out. That's basically how we do our tests. There's a bunch of different ways to get your gun to probably shoot twice as much paint as we do in the efficiency test. One, make sure that you get a cold 4,500 PSI fill, okay? The hotter your tank is, um, you know, the hotter your tank is, the, you know, as your tank cools down, your pressure is going to drop, okay? The, if you can get a cold 4,500 PSI fill, which could take you up to 20 minutes, you know, you, you fill your tank to 4,500 PSI, it gets really hot, wait a few seconds, and then, um, you know, wait a couple minutes for it to cool back down again, go fill it back up again, it's going to, you're going to keep, you know, basically you're going to fill it to 4,500 PSI, hot fill is going to go down to 4,200. Then you're going to fill it up again. It's not going to get as hot and it's going to drop down to about 4350. Then you're going to cool it down and you'll fill it up again. It's going to go to like 4450. Then it's going to finally go to 4500 PSI at like 90 degrees. That's a good cold fill 4500 PSI. Next thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you're shooting larger bore paint. Okay, if you're 675 paint through a 688 barrel, obviously isn't going to be as efficient if you're shooting like 689 paint. Typically, from what I've seen, I haven't seen any sort of science to back this up yet, but from what I've seen, even if you bore the paint, I've for me, it seems like larger bore paint, like at 689, even bored seems to shoot or be more efficient than even like 675 paint that's bored, okay? Um, maybe it's because it's more surface area. Maybe it's like a, you know, sail on a, on a boat or something like that. I don't know. Next thing you want to do is instead of shooting at ramping, which is going to freeze your tank very, very quickly, shoot it at semi-auto and shoot it very slowly, okay? Instead of sitting there, brrr, go like this. But, but one ball per second, okay? What that's gonna do is, is the tank pressure isn't gonna drop as quickly because it's not getting chilled, so you're gonna get significantly more shots. So, and also another thing you can do is instead of chronoing the gun at 300, 300 uh, FPS, chrono it at 285. So, you know, there's a bunch of little tricks and secrets and tips and little things that you could do also. And something else too, 
If you're using larger bore paint, well, that's less balls per pot, okay? If you're using very, very small paint, that's a lot of paint, a lot more paint balls are gonna fit in the pot. You may get 10, 15, maybe 20 more balls in a large pod as opposed to larger paint in there. So you may only get 130 rounds of standard 689 paint in a, in a pod, but you know, if you go with a super small paint, you may get, let's say 145 in there. So, you know, so a pod of small paint has more paint balls in it than a pod of bigger paint. So there's all sorts of different things. So don't, you know, if you email me, oh, my local pro shop got, you know, 15 pods out of the DM. What are you talking about? Okay, well, there's, you know, I could do the same thing. You just, a bunch of different ways that you can, you know, change up parameters in order to get more efficiency. So let's go ahead and do the efficiency test on the DM13 and we'll come back for the conclusion. All right, about to do the efficiency test on the DM13. And uh, we are actually sitting almost right at 4,500 PSI. Uh, so uh, now we're gonna do, tank's a little warm, probably about 9,500 degrees. I'm sorry, the uh, our uh, tank, uh, tank temperature reading gauge it the uh, battery died on it so we're gonna do this go ahead and chronograph it really quick load up our first pod So last year we're sitting at about 294, 297, so we're sitting right in the mid 290s. Okay, it looks like we got uh, 10 pods out of the DM13. Thank you. Okay, so, you know, DM13. Okay, a couple things in my opinion. One, die needs to improve their triggers. Um, it's not necessarily that it's a bad trigger, and they did a good job finally on moving the spring down, but the spring on these things are, are extremely stiff. And also something else is there's a little bit of side-to-side -side play, and you can and you can feel the trigger rubbing up against a little bit on the uh, the inside of the trigger well. You know, I would like to see, especially on a gun that's this expensive, some extended inner raceway bearings, um, you know, to prevent a lot of the side-to-side -side play. I'd like to see a lot more adjustment in the spring tension. Um, a lot more adjustment on the trigger, and and I would just like to feel this trigger a lot more locked down than it is out of the box. I mean, it, it's just I don't know. I, I 
you know, I'm really getting sick of seeing this trigger in this gun. I want to see some improvements in the damn trigger already. Um, the other thing, you know, everybody's calling for it, and I think it's about that time now. We need to see an OLED board, okay? DM14, I think it's time we see an OLED board, okay? Yeah, the, the, the LED boards were nice back in the mid-2000s, but charging this kind of money for the gun, um, I mean, I think right now it's the probably one of the only guns right now above $1,000 that, you know, does not have an OLED board. It's time for an OLED board in this gun. So, you know, th those are probably the two biggest things that I would like to see, uh, two biggest improvements I would like to see on this gun. If you kept everything else the same, gave me a much better trigger uh, and an OLED board, I think a lot of people would be a lot happier, but you know, it just hasn't happened yet. Um, other, other than that, you know, taking the bolt apart, it's the same exact bolt you've seen, um, same exact regulator, same exact LPR. There's nothing that's been changed on this gun whatsoever. I mean, I think people that uh, don't even own DMs can take apart these guns. I'm not going to gut this gun because it's, it's the same exact internals we've seen for the past three, four years. So, um, but, you know, other than that, you know, you know, does the gun shoot good? Yeah, the gun shoots good. You know, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, how do you, you know, how do you set the LPR and stuff like that? You know, I did a, I did a show showing people how to set the LPR, but uh, basically here's what you do. Take your Allen key and put it in your LPR. Now, if you back it out, it's, it's like the, it's like a faucet, you know, on the side or the hose on the side of your house. Okay. If you back it out, you get more pressure, you tighten it, you know, uh, you don't get as much air, uh, water pressure coming out. Here's what you do. Degas the gun completely and make sure there's no air in the gun whatsoever. You want to crease your, your, your seal. Go ahead and uh, tighten it. You know, go ahead and, and, and tighten it. Now you don't want to you don't want to torque it down. You just want to go until you feel it finger tight, and then back it out about one turn. Now you're going to air the gun up, and you want to keep backing it out until you see the bolt get sucked back. Now what you're going to do is go to the chronograph and keep unscrewing it until your velocity plateaus. Okay, wherever it's at. So let's say your you know your regus has a set of 285 feet per second. Okay, keep going until your velocity plateaus. And once your velocity plateaus, just go out another half a turn. Okay, what that's going to do is it's going to compensate for any sort of dirt getting inside the gun. Um, maybe lube moves around a little bit. Maybe you get an O-ring that starts running dry. Maybe you forgot to take your gun apart. But basically that, that little extra half a turn, just raising the, the pressure just a little bit more is going to ensure that your gun shoots consistent over the course of the entire day or over the course of the entire weekend. So just that little extra insurance definitely helps. I even know some pro players will even take their dwell and raise it one millisecond just for that little extra insurance in case for whatever reason, if you're at a tournament or something, you shoot an extra case of paint that you weren't planning on it and, and, and you just, it just ensures that your gun's going to behave the entire weekend. You don't want to be towards the end of the day and all of a sudden you're in a game and all of a sudden you start getting massive drop off and, and real, real crazy shot to shot consistency. So uh, let's go ahead and weigh it. So two pounds, almost six ounces, not a light gun. <laughs> Uh, two pounds, six ounces. Ah, something was going on with my scale here. Sorry. Hold on. There we go. So two pounds, 5.7 ounces. Not a light gun. And it's not a small gun by any stretch of the imagination either, okay? The gun is very tall, very big, um, compared to some of the other guns that are out there on the market. I mean, you've got the LPR and the bolt here in the back. Uh, definitely quite a bit of metal, probably four inches of metal from the from the bottom of your of your hand to the top of the gun. Um, you know, but but then again, you know, when you're shooting a DM, well, one of the biggest things a lot of people like to say about the DM is, oh, it doesn't it doesn't have any kick. Well, having all that extra metal and mass behind the ball definitely helps in it not having a lot of kick so you know it's just it's just the nature of the beast you go to a super lightweight gun you're going to feel the recoil a lot more go to a slightly heavier gun you know you're going to get less recoil so um that's it i mean i, I you know dies at the point right now i want to see oled boards in their guns i want to see, i want a better adjustable trigger i'd like to see some extended inner raceways on here so the triggers locked down no side to side play more adjustability um in the uh especially on the tension of the trigger and stuff like that um, maybe even it's time we get a tr you know trigger activation screw in here so that we can adjust exactly where we want the trigger to activate. Um, you know, post and pre-travel is there through the sides, but you know I, I think the trigger is due for an overhaul. I've been seeing the same trigger for the past few years and OLED board. That's what I want to see for the next uh, DM. Thanks for tuning in.